Hello. We are celebrating our Black heritage, our Black history. We are celebrating us this month. So today, for our celebration, we have Carter G. Woodson, born December 19th, 1875, and lived until April 3rd, 1950. He was an American historian, author, journalist, and founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. He was one of the first scholars to study African American history, a founder of the journal Negro History in 1916. Woodson has been cited as the father of Black History Week. In February 1916, he launched the celebration of Negro History Week the precursor of Black History Month. So we have spoke about Carter G. Woodson today, and I just want to add on to that. Um, in the 80s, there was a school that was named after him that was called Carter G. Woodson Junior High School, which I did attend in the mid to late 80s. Uh, it's no longer there, but I thought I would go ahead and share that because that is also part of history. It was located in Washington, D.C. on Minnesota Avenue. So I just thought that would be a fun thing to share. Thank you. Be blessed and have a great one. And I am so happy that you are here learning about your history, your heritage, and love the skin that you are in always. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to uh, make a quick correction about the end of what I said about Carter G. Woodson. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this. He did, he did not launch Black History Week in 1916. I gave the wrong date um, in, in the uh, pre previously I gave the wrong date. But the right date is the right the right year. Excuse me, the right year is 1926. He launched Black History Week in 1926, and yes, he the precursor of Black History Month. He is the originator. You know, he started Black History Week, and then it became Black History Month, February 1926. That is the correction. I just wanted to come on here real quick and give the right information. Be blessed. Have a great one. And remember to love the skin you are in unapologetically always. Hello, hello, hello. This is V. Scott coming to you with our history and our heritage. We'll be talking about Audrey Lord. She was born February 18th, 1934. She passed away November 17th, 1992. She was an American writer, feminist, womanist, library, and civil rights activist. As a poet, she is best known for technical mastery and emotional expression, as well as her poems that express anger and outrage at civil and social injustices. She observed throughout her life her poems and prose largely deal with issues related to civil rights, feminism, lesbianism, illness, and disability, and the exploitation of black female identity. Thank you.
Hello, hello, hello. This is V. Scott. I am coming to you with our history and our heritage. We will be talking about Mary Beatrice Davison Kenner, born May 17th, 1912, passed away January 13th, 2006. She was an African American inventor, most noted for her development of the sanitary belt. Racial discrimination prevented its adoption for 30 years. She invented the sanitary belt with moisture proof napkin pocket, which was not used until 30 years after she invented it. The company that first showed interest in, in her invention rejected it after they discovered that she was an African-American woman. In 1957, she was finally able to save up enough money to get her first patent on the sanitary belt. Between 1956 and 1987, she received five total patents for her household and personal item creations. She shared the patent on the toilet tissue holder with her sister, Mildred Davidson, dated October 19, 1982. She held a patent on the back washer that could that could be mounted on the shower or bathtub wall. This invention was pat patented in 1987. She also patented the carrier attachment for a walker in 1959. Thank you for listening. Be blessed. Have a great one. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is B. Scott coming to you with our history and our heritage. We'll be talking about Donna Lee Luna, born Peggy Ann Freeman, August 31st, 1945. She passed away May 17th, 1979. She was an American actress model, generally cited as the first black supermodel. Luna was the first African-American model to appear on the cover of the British edition of Vogue in May of 1966. Today I am not reading a poem that I have written, but I will be reading a poem written by Maya Angelou out of her book, The Complete Collective Poems of Maya Angelou. I am so excited to be reading her poem because I think she is an awesome, awesome, awesome poet. I love Maya Angelou's work. I love her work. I love her work. Yes, I do. And the poem's name is called, It's Love, Midwives and Winding Sheep. No birthing is hard and dying is mean, and living's a trial in between. Why do we journey muttering like rumors among the stars? Is a dimension lost? Is it love? And I just want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank you all for subscribing, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you for the awesome work, Miss Maya Angelo. I love your work. Thank you so much for your words because if not for you making the way for us we would not be making our way as poets either so we thank you and we appreciate you mwah, 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 to all of you good evening this is Verda McDougal aka V Scott Speaks daughter getting ready to recite to you one of Nikki Giovanni's finest poems entitled Ego Tripping. There may be a reason why. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center giving divine perfect light. I am bad. I sat on the throne, drinking nectar with Allah. I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my thirst. My oldest daughter is Nefertiti. The tears from my birth pains created the Nile. I am a beautiful woman. I gazed on the forest and burned out the Sahara Desert with a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes. I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle so swift, so swift you can't catch me. For a birthday present when he was three, 
I gave my son Hannibal an elephant. He gave me Rome for Mother's Day. My strength flows ever on. My son Noah built a new ark, and I stood proudly at the helm as we sailed on a soft summer day. I, I turned myself into myself and was Jesus. Men intone my loving name, all praises, all praises. I am the one who would save. I sowed my diamonds in my backyard. My boughs deliver uranium. The fillings from my fingernails are semi-precious jewels. On a trip north, I caught a cold and blue. My nose giving oil to the Arab world. I am so hip, even my errors are correct. I sailed west to reach east and had to round off the earth as I went. The hair from my head thin and gold was laid across three continents. I am so perfect. Hello, hello, hello. This is Roberta. I will be reading a poem that I have written called Music. Music is so beautiful. It can bring out so many different emotions. Music is a go-to for me when I am happy, sad, or just in the relaxing state of mind. Music is the lover that loves me and doesn't lie, but tells me all the secrets and reveals so many truths to me. Music takes me back down memory lane mm -hmm. and have me smiling from ear to ear because I am reminiscing about the love I once had or cracking up laughing about your bad I call Tyrone. Mm. But you can't use my phone. <laughs> Music will make my body move and I will be moving and grooving. You see music, you are a part of me. You see music, you were constantly being played in our house growing up. My mom, the greatest mom of all time and everyone's favorite aunt is why I love music so much. You were going to hear music when you came to Aunt Bumpy's house. My mom, yes, the greatest mom of all. You may have heard some Chuck Brown saying, run Joe, or her all-time favorite, I need money, MasterCard, Visa, American Express. <laughs> I ain't got nothing against no credit cards, but the cash is the best. Yes, Chuck Brown said it best around our house. Music, I have so many good memories with you. Yes, I do. Throughout my life, I now have memories with my own children and family and friends too. Music, I have more memories to make with you. Thank you for listening. I will be reading a poem that I've written. The name of it is Poetry in Motion. And um, I just want to warn you all that it is a little different than what I usually write. So here we go. Poetry in Motion. Poetry in motion, your lips touch mine and our bodies intertwine. Our bodies make beautiful sounds of poetry in motion. I let out a loud sigh of pleasure. My body has reached that very special point during this beautiful poetry in motion. Poetry in motion, your hands massage my thighs and I close my eyes, preparing myself for what comes next. I know exactly what's about to go down. Our bodies have started creating beautiful poetry in motion. This poetry in motion has totally blown my mind. I want to know when will we create beautiful poetry in motion again? I just can't get enough of you and the beautiful mind blowing poetry in motion we make. This is Roberta McDougald, associated with VMAC Queen. Today I will be reading my poem called Bully. Um, I wrote this poem a few months back. Once I finish reading this poem, then I will talk about the issues of bullying. So here we go. Bully. Does it make you feel big and bad picking on someone half your size? 
Do you feel empowered picking on someone just because you see them as an easy target? I'm calling you out today. You are a bully. Being a bully is a coward's move. Take a look at yourself and ask yourself this question. Why do you pick on people that are different than you? Bully, bully, bully is exactly what you are. I'm telling you today, we are standing up to your bullying ways. We are not going to take your bullying anymore. Who taught you this terrible behavior? Does bullying make you feel better about yourself? Bullying has destroyed so many people's lives. No, we will not be bullied anymore and let you have the power over our lives. Bullying children grow up to be bullying adults. The bullying adults teach children how to be bullies. It's best to stop bullying so you can teach children better behavior. Stop the bullying. Stop the bullying. That's what needs to happen. This bullying needs to stop. And I feel like this bullying starts at home. This bullying starts at home. Is someone in the household bullying the children that's bullying the children in the schools, in the church, at social functions, and things like that? that that's just the way I feel, and I think that we need to nip it in the bud at home. And some parents are bullies, okay? We're going to just be honest, okay? When we're going to be honest, some parents are actually bullies, and they bully their children. They need prayer. That's, that's what needs to happen. You need to go ahead on, get yourself some prayer, get yourself together, and, and stop bullying these children so they can be better children in school and other places where they won't be bullying other children and, and things like that because that's no good. That's no good. And then children, they, they, they go out here and some of them quit school. And, and quite a few children have killed themselves behind bullying, behind bullying. That, that, that should never happen. That is one thing that I don't think should ever happen. What I think parents, time to nip it in the bud. If you are a bullying parent, get yourself some help. If you have children that's bullying, the children at home you need to go ahead and nip that right on in the bud so it will stop if you have aunts that's bullying your children uncles nieces any of those things all those play a factor into your children bullying other children at school yes and bullying children do become bullying adults because that's what they were taught but it's time to break the cycle Stop the bullying. Stop being the bully. Get yourself some help. Get some prayer. This is Verda McDougal. I love you. That's why I'm letting you know what's real and what's the truth. Be blessed.